Hi everyone, thank you very much for being here today and welcome to this uh, collaborative uh, workshop. So today we're going to talk about new technology and new technology in precision uh, forestry. And so we get the chance to have uh, two passionate speakers with me today. So uh, Kevin Todrell, which is from uh, RMUS, she is the general manager, and Jean-François Prieur, who is the project manager at CFO, and myself, Bastien Menendal, which is a researcher at Nashorai. And so we build a workshop into three parts. And during the first part, Kevin is going to do a showcase of technology because we are going to show you how to use this technology. So the first part will be dedicated to a little showcase about UAV, mobile laser scanning and other types of technologies. Then I will be taking the talk and talk about mobile laser scanning and UAV laser scanning and how to process the data from raw product to useful product. I will show you a lot of different interactive video. And then uh, Jean-François Prieur is going to finish uh, talking about species, AI, and uh, different type of uh, satellite data, more particularly the planetscope data, and how to process them to get a useful product for foresters. So I know you have seen the, the product, the sensors, all the different type of platform. What I want to show you now is how to process this data. So uh, in forestry in particular, that may be difficult sometimes to play with this kind of new technology. And so I really want to show you that it's possible to process this data and to get some useful product for, for foresters. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk a lot about LiDAR technology, so I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So I prepared just one slide to talk about it. So LiDAR is an acronym for Light Detection and Ranging. And so we are, when we are talking about LiDAR in forestry, we are talking about an active sensor that throws a, a few light pulsation onto a forest scene in this case. And so what the sensor is recording is a certain amount of light intensity. And the advantage of LiDAR technology is that you can go through the vegetation and have data not only on top of the canopy, but also on, on the entire vertical structure of the trees and also obviously the ground. And so when you get a pulse like this, usually what you do is that you get a pulse of light and you discretize this light to, to get for one single pulsation that you throw on a vegetation, you get multiple returns that you can record. And so when we're playing with lighter data, what we do is we play with some attribute tables, a bit like this. So you get a lot of information about the GPS time, the intensity of the signal, the number of return, and at the end you play with X, Y, and Z data, and you get this information on, on the entire vertical information on the forest. So that's why LiDAR technology is interesting for Forester, and it's a bit different than playing with images and playing with photogrammetry. Uh, when we talk also about LiDAR technology, we get a really a lot of a variety of platform now. A lot of people, when they talk about LiDAR in forestry, they talk about airborne LiDAR, the most used so far. Uh, but and also tertiary laser scanning. There have been um, about maybe 30 years of research about it and a lot of uh, algorithms that has been developed. Uh, the thing is, when you look at precision forestry, when you use either uh, airborne laser scanning or tertiary laser scanning, you, you have disadvantage with some of this technology. Uh, airborne LiDAR, as you can see on the 3D point cloud, you are missing a lot of things on the branchiness, on the trunk. And tertiary laser scanning, uh, it's really, really accurate, but you are working with really dense point cloud. And it's not that practical in the field because it's static, so you need to move the sensor, it's on a tripod, and it's pretty long to acquire the data. So today I want to show you, and I got like two parts in this presentation, what, one will be on mobile laser scanning, so the one you just uh, see before with, uh, with Kevin, and another one will be on UAV laser uh, scanning, and so I will show you, um, I think I got like five or six video to show you how to acquire the data and how to process it. So just before that, if you look at the data also, you can have really an, uh, an idea here of the level of details you can get from each one of these technologies. So if you go from the top to the bottom, you can look at the same slice of uh, a uh, mature wood forest in Edmundston, in McCoy Brook Forest. You can see the level of detail you can get. The first two one were taken in leaf on condition, and the two other one was taken in leaf off condition. And so if you look at the data, you get airborne la laser scanning, you get UAV laser scanning, another UAV laser scanning, leaf on, leaf off. And finally, the overmap, so that's the sensor you can see over there. So you can really see the type of data you can get, and it's about uh, more than maybe 120 meters length over there. 
So the first part will be about mobile laser technology. So Kevin introduced this technology. And uh, so we did a first uh, pilot study in a mature I would stand where we collected this type of data. So as you can see over there, that's, that's this uh, mobile laser scanning that is capturing data. So you see that there is a, a rotative head and it's capturing like 3D data of the forest. This one is the first pilot study that was in a pretty spare stand of hardwood forest. But we wanted first to test the technology in uh, what we call the, an easy environment to then go and uh, look at more complex uh, stand structures. So here it's a really mature uh, hardwood stand of sugar maple trees. And we tested different scenarios of acquisition. So uh, using a 10 by 10 meter uh, parallel line, using also 20 meter by 20 meter grid, and other type of uh, acquisition to make sure that we get uh, the same kind of accuracy at the end and to see what is the most optimized way to acquire data at the one hectare scale. So here's a video to see that when you, you collect the data, so for example, in this case at the one hectare scale, that takes about, in this case, three hours to automatically process uh, a one hectare point cloud. If you are looking at the individual plot level, 11.28 meters, we are talking about 10 to 15 minutes max to process. And so in this case, when you are looking at the data, the one hectare scale, this is the type of data you can work with. So we'll see that in 3D, and, and uh, I've done also some slides of it. You can see uh, the type of data we, we are collecting and we are just processing afterwards. So you can really see that you get information not, not just on the ground, but also on the top canopy. And uh, you can also see like all the, this fine information that you can get on, on the, the branchiness at the trunk structure. Um, what you see over there is the trajectory we use. So when you use SLAM technology, it's always good to come back where you collect the data to make some loops and improve the accuracy because the, the technology is building a map. Uh, and so if you come back at the same, uh, uh, same point, you can just improve the accuracy and help the algorithms to process the data. So here's a view, it's maybe more interesting to look at it like that, where you can see really that in 40 minutes of acquisition, if you take a slice in this particular type of forest, that's the type of data you can, you can get here. And so if you use the same kind of technology with terrestrial laser scanning, that would take you about a week to collect. Here it's about 40 minutes. So just visually, we can already see some incredible potential for uh, supporting harvesting operation. Here we can easily extract some tree maps about it. Uh, can you really see the, the location of each uh, individual tree? But you, you can also uh, exploit this technology not, not just for uh, industry and for, uh, for uh, harvesting, but also to look at more ecological size of forest. So for example, now we are looking at, at the view from the top, looking at the canopy. You can easily detect where you get some crown openings, for example, for regeneration assessment. Uh, also to look at the competitive uh, side of tree, uh, looking at uh, different neighbors. And so, yeah, powerful technology. We've tested a few bunch of technologies technology in the past and this one is so far the, the best. And so I'm showing you that in each of the frames that we presented before in the Digital Timberland project, we got about nine sample plots. And so in the next video that we'll show you, we'll uh, look at the individual sample plot uh, level to show you what we can do uh, for inventory purposes. And so this one is, for example, an 11.28 meter sample plot with a 10 meter buffer. And so uh, that gives you also an idea of what it looks like when we're processing this type of data, which is obviously also uh, less heavy than uh, the one hectare area to show you uh, some, some processing, processing steps. So that makes the turn for the visu visualization part. Uh, what I want to show you is that when, when you get this data, usually we get like a typical workflow we can use to process this data. And so that's all the steps I want to show you, not really in all of the, the details over there. But basically when you get this data, what you want to do is to look usually at the individual tree level because you are doing some forestry, some precision forestry. And so there is a first step is to acquire this data and then process it to look at the individual tree. So far, that's the most complex part of the process and that's where we really struggle, uh, essentially, uh, especially in, in more complex environment like mixed forest, uh, where to, to get the individual tree level is not always as easy as it looks. And so once you get the individual tree level, you want to just filter the data and extract tree metrics, for example, like diameter at best height, height, crown dimension, uh, crown projected area, and also looking at more complex treatment uh, processing steps like quantitative structural modeling where we model the entire tree uh, using uh, what we call cylinder fitting process. So you just extract uh, the, um, the woody parts and fit a lot of cylinders on it to extract some merchantable wood volume. 
So at the end, in this, uh, this, uh, the study we did, we compared it to tertiary laser scanning technology that is the most accurate so far, but also to manual uh, measurement. So what I want to show you in this video is the first steps of the processing. So the idea is really when you get the raw data like this, you clip it uh, uh, for a sample plot. Uh, we got a bunch of steps that you can do here uh, automatically to um, get to the inventory level. So that's, that's gonna, that takes about uh, here for one single plot about seven to eight minutes to process automatically. And so you got a bunch of steps. I'm just showing a, a few ones over there. So you separate your soil from the, uh, your vegetation from the ground. Uh, once this is done, you can also extract what we call uh, clusters. That are some seeds that the algorithm is using to segment a tree. So we are going to detect the stem first and then use algorithms to come and climb in the, tr climb in the tree and segment it from, uh, from its neighbor. So that's what it's doing over there. So once you get all of these segments like that, uh, the algorithms know that you get a trunk and so it's going to like use uh, it's, uh, all of these methods to detect the tree and separate it from the other. So when you are in uh, an environment like that, it's kind of obvious you don't need to do a lot of manual steps, but sometimes if, if you get a lot of low vegetation and stuff, stuff that is not that uh, beautiful visually and you need some time to manually adjust it. So, so far, that's the step that is the most critical uh, when we apply this type of, uh, of sensor in forest environment, that's to get to this level of individual tree. Uh, same type of, of analysis can be done also in software. We have done it also, and that give you a good example. So now we have done the, the data collection, the data processing. We are now moving at the individual tree level. So you get all of this tree, you can put it in database. And the idea is that you can just go in uh, open source software like R or Python or whatever software you're using and uh, throw a bunch of line of code and get for each one of these individual tree the attribute we want for forestry purposes. So in this case, the algorithm is just automatically generating this file over there where you can see, uh, and you will see it after, like a 2D picture of each one of these three. You can look at the level of detail, it's already uh, pretty amazing. So you can extract, you get the height information uh, above. So the height, the diameter of the site over there, so you can see in, uh, in blue that's a circle that it's fitted to the, to the trunk that gives you an idea of the, the diameter at 1.3 meter height. But you can also have other information that are sometimes quite difficult to get in the field. So uh, when I'm talking about height, that seems uh, an easy variable to get in the field. But if you look at uh, cron dimension, for example, and I've done it in the past, that's not always easy to measure in the field and that's not really accurate. But with this type of technology, you can easily get like the, what we see over there, the cron projected area. And when we extract this type of information, I think that can be really helpful to develop some allometric models and using like cron dimension, tree height, and then predict also sometimes some more complex uh, features. So that can be useful to do some upscaling with other type of, uh, of technology. So at the end, when you use this type of script, you get an attribute table with for each one of your tree, you get the location of it. So you can uh, easily also extract some other information. And like the, you can extract DBA distribution, which is obviously pretty interesting for, for foresters, uh, easily extract basal area. And also something that it's like interesting to get, the tree map, and that is really not easy to measure in the field. Like I've done it with some post or some azimuth and distance technology, but it takes forever. Here in a sample plot, so you can collect it in five minutes. So if you need just the tree map and DBH, that's something pretty easy to get. And also a map that will show you, uh, for example, the, the tree eight or the, di the DBH dimension. So that's for the, the part for the tree metric extraction, that's um, some simple tree metric, but still that's really, uh, really uh, feasible and, uh, and interesting. And you can get a little bit uh, further and, uh, and look at more complex uh, information. And in this time, we are talking about wood volume. So that's obviously something we want to have to support harvesting operation. Uh, it's a bit more complex to get, uh, to get this type of analysis. Uh, that's still not really user friendly, to be honest. Uh, I've done it, but uh, it takes some time to get a hand of it. The first part was kind of easy. We are going into more expert uh, things. But there are people really trying to improve that and, and get uh, some automatic or semi-automatic algorithm. And in this case, what you can see in 3D, that's uh, the cylinder fitting process that it's fitted to the 3D punk load. 
So you can see here the, the cylinders that are fitted to the, to the point cloud. So you see it's not perfect yet. We're trying to improve that and there are a lot of informatic people because that's not really <laughs> some stuff that like uh, most of the forester can handle. That's really advanced algorithm, but uh, we can already extract some uh, really powerful information. And when, when you are talking about tree quality, and I think Gaetan will talk about it, and we will see that during the, the field day, we want to get to the form, we want to get to the risk, and all of this can be used to get to this level of uh, tree quality. So this one is just uh, an image of the, the skeleton of a tree. And I think I just got another, uh, another example of the same kind of analysis, but with the more uh, less mature tree, a more juvenile one. And, uh, and in this case, you can see that it, it's working well too. And, uh, and again, uh, one of the advantage of this technique is that you can work at different levels. So for example, if you just want information on your trunk, you can say, I just want to get the, the, the trunk volume. If you want to look at the branches also, that's something, uh, you can have also a lot of volume sometimes in hardwood trees. We've done some study and so far we had like about, usually you get 80% of the volume of the tree, 70 to 80 that is in the main trunk, but still you still have another 20 to 30% that are in the branches. And so you will see the statistic after. We try also to look at, each level, what is the, the accuracy of uh, this type of sensor at each level of, uh, of the branchiness, so the trunk and then uh, all the, the other branches. So once you generate this type of data, you can uh, also uh, look at identifying only the merchantable part of the tree. And so in this case, you can just say, okay, I just want a tree to, yeah, that has a segment of 244 uh, centimeter length and uh, a diameter of that bar of, three, of eight centimeter, for example, or 7.5, depending on where you are. And we also compare this type of data with manual and destructive measurement we did in the field. Uh, and you will see the, the, the statistic just after. But that's something that is interesting if you want also to look at another attribute that is pretty interesting, which is the stem taper. So you can build the stem taper curve here for hardwood or softwood. Usually it's more, we are more using that in, in softwood, but you can also do that here uh, in, uh, in, uh, in hardwood trees. And I think that's, yeah, that was it for this, this video. So that gives you a good overview of, okay, we acquire the data, we pre-process it, we process it, we extract tree matrix, but we also extract some uh, merchantable wood volume. Uh, if you look now at the, the statistics, I hope it's, uh, it's uh, big enough to see, but this is some comparison we did for the basic tree metric in the stand you have seen so far. So just keep in mind that's still an easy stand to, to begin with. And so now we are testing the technology in more complex environment. We'll come probably with another studies uh, during, during the, the next year. But we had really in an in a automatic uh, process some really good results for uh, all these attributes. So you can see that over there. So we tested different acquisition scenario as I explained. I will not go into detail for, for this. But basically when you use a 20 by 20 meter grid and a uh, 40 minutes acquisition, we had uh, some really accurate uh, estimates of tree heights. Uh, we are talking here about 160 trees, something like that. For DBH, depending on the scenario, we were, we were be between a one and five centimeter RMSC and a bias of uh, minus two to uh, one or zero centimeters. So automatically it's, it's pretty accurate. And that's compared, this one that was compared to a terrestrial laser scanning technology. Um, this time, what you see here is we harvested 26 trees in the, the one hectare stands and we compared the measurable volume. So we're only talking about the volume of the tree of 244 centimeters length and 8 centimeters diameter of side bark. And what we have seen so far, and this is just one result, but we get uh, usually an overestimation by the mobile laser scanning sensor. But when we decompose it by branching order, we've seen that when we just look at the main stem, we get less than 10% bias, which is pretty good. And that's when you go to the branching structure, there you get an overestimation. You're farther from the sensor, the beam divergence is larger than tertiary laser scanning technology, and you're moving in for us. So you really see that at the branching level. 
If you look this time at a comparison uh, of the operational merchantable volume between uh, tertial and mobile laser scanning, still we still see also an overestimation of this operational merchantable volume, but you get a really uh, accurate here a bias about 6%. So keep in mind that you can uh, basically win maybe five days of data collection and still get this type of result in uh, the first 10 I, I just show you. And that's the, the same uh, analysis this time, but looking just at the STEM level, so TLS, tertial laser scanning versus mobile laser scanning on about 160 trees, a bias that is less than, uh, than 5% and an RMSC of about 10%, which was also really good, using the, the exact raw flow that I, that I showed you uh, before. So globally for the mobile laser scanning technology, uh, we see so far a lot of potential, uh, cost-effective data acquisition, efficient and easy to use in the field especially. That's really not complex. You go in the field, you push on the button, you collect the data, you take your USB port, you put it in the software and you, pro you pre-process the data. So that's pretty efficient. Um, so the potential we see is obviously to optimize timber harvesting. That's for, for probably one of the, the most important parts. Also something that can be interesting for species composition. We are talking a lot, uh, and, and uh, Jean-François is going to talk about species. He's, he loves it. Uh, it's not always easy to get to the species, but with AI and machine learning technology, uh, you can imagine that if you go and collect this data on a bunch of uh, one hectare stand, you will just get a lot of training data. So maybe that's something that can be useful also. Uh, regeneration assessment. I talked to uh, one of, uh, of a colleague here in the in the in the room that was doing also a regeneration assessment using mobile laser scanning data. So that's obviously a good potential. And for me, what I see, uh, it's really a, a powerful tool uh, to uh, calibrate allometric models. We know that we sometimes don't have the data, uh, don't have a lot of data to calibrate these allometric curves. We got finally a, a tool that is easy to use and that can maybe replace or just be used to uh, collect data instead of doing just destructive measurements. So we get something uh, interesting over there too. Uh, on the minus parts, what we can see is that it's still limited applicability in more complex forests, as I said. So we still need to uh, improve our knowledge about that, maybe develop some algorithm. So don't, don't take this result as a result you can apply everywhere, obviously not. Uh, it's still limited in small-scale assessment technology. I would not go a bit more than one hectare after that. That's going to be more complex to process. And there is obviously some learning curve and expertise, but it's becoming uh, more and more accessible. We see a lot of uh, research groups all over the world, in Europe, in the uh, in, uh, in US, in Canada, that are working together and developing some package that can be uh, used in open source. And there are a lot of collaboration now because it's a small technology. You can just use it and share it between, uh, between uh, research, uh, research companies or just work with academia pretty well. But there is still an initial investment and operational cost, and Kevin uh, talked uh, about it. This technology is still expensive. I know that now there are a lot of competition, so the, the price is, trying, is really decreasing, it's dec democratizing, but still, uh, we still need to get some operational cost at the beginning. And the last thing we see is the data, data integration challenge, because um, we, we are working with a lot of with lighter data. It's not really, uh, it's heavy data. We need to get some structure, some computer power too. So that's something to keep in mind too if you want to go and use lighter data in, a, in your research or in your industry. So that was for the part of mobile laser technology. I got another little speech on UV-based LiDAR this time. It's a shorter one. I'll just present a, a case study about it. So we, we've done also a lot of tests about UV laser technology in hardwood and in softwood, um, in softwood uh, environment. I will show a, a short uh, case study here in, in a plantation and then a two little one in the hardwood stand. So, this time, uh, again, I will do the same type of, uh, of uh, analysis. So first the data acquisition and then the data processing. The, so Kevin talked about it, but you can put this type of technology in a UAV uh, and also collect the data from above the canopy this time. And depending of, on the laser technology that you, you, you use, you will have a really different type of point cloud. So uh, this one was put on a M300 RTK like this. But we did a lot of 2D also with the LiAir V70 because this one is good for quite small data. But with other type of sensor like this one, we can go to a, we, we did the, some analysis on 10 hectare plots, so which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. 
And uh, we've done some testing in Ali Burton research for us and everything. And so, yeah, I think the, dr the drone is, is there after that. <laughs> That's less interesting, but uh, they show you the acquisition. And sometimes when you process the data, it's, uh, it's really different. You got a total different uh, workflow. You're working this time not with data collected in the ground, but from the air. So you work with flight lines. So what you got to do is to align all of this flight line together. And so depending when we were talking about the cost of this technology, the cost is an important factor because depending on the accuracy you will get, the sensors that are usually most costly will give you a better flight line alignment, sometimes some software that are more accurate for this. And so depending on the accuracy you need, you will need to really get into that parameters and to see if you can really get some uh, flight lines that are well aligned. After that, you can do some basic point load classification also some point load collaboration, and finally applied other type of algorithm to go to the individual uh, tree level. And so when you, you look at the data in the middle, the, the point number four, what is interesting that now a lot of sensors get uh, an integration of RGB camera and LiDAR sensors. So you can just at the end have a, a point load that is colorized. And that is pre pretty powerful because you can not just do some basic inventory, but you can also look at, for example, the health of your forest or other type of information. So another little video over there. I don't know if I, oh, okay. So we did a, a project with uh, GD Irving Limited here, and, uh, and then they allow us to show this type of uh, video. So we collected UV-based LiDAR data with these exact same sensor over there over about 10 plantation of 10 hectares. And they asked us to develop some processing workflow to get to the individual tree level and give them an assessment of the density of the tree, the tree height, the current dimension. So that's a really important value for them because they want to implement it to build better growth models. So usually they get a lot of information for the, the later part of the model, the, the more mature trees. But when we are looking at individual tree and young tree like this, there are not a lot of manual intervention that I've done so far to measure this tree. And so that was uh, what it's interesting, so that's a, an example over there. Um, so when you collect this type of data, you can easily, after that, uh, look at the data and just display it uh, by height, for example, in this case, or uh, I will see after the type of, uh, of data visualization, but already you can see that uh, you can just visually, your brain is pretty good at, at looking at individual tree, but you can develop some, some interesting processing uh, to get to the, to the tree level, and that's, that's what we did. So here already a 10 hectare area using UV-based LiDAR data. There are not a lot of people, not of project that, that does this type of, um, of analysis. Usually it's shorter area, but still we wanted to give it a try and look also at the density we wanted to get to, uh, to, to, to get to the optimal density to acquire this type of data. So that's the famous uh, 3D point load in color that I was talking about. And so this time, instead of looking at the trunk to get to the entry level, the idea is to look at the tree top. Because we are in soft wood, you can identify easily the tree tops. And once you identify the tree tops, you can use that and use other type of algorithm to segment the entire tree from the top to the bottom this time. And so again, um, when you get to this individual level, after that, that's just a matter of taking the data, doing an attribute table, and extract some basic statistics. This is always like, even in, in software, the most complex part. Essentially, when you get also some, um, some low vegetation that can do uh, some competition with uh, young trees, and uh, we will explain that a bit later, but we, we see that also some machine learning potential to identify, the, for example, the software tree over there and, and, uh, and uh, extract only this, uh, this species, for example. I think that's the last part of the video where we see just the tree tops, and yeah, that gives you also a polygon at the end with the crown delimitation. Uh, so pretty powerful tool um, to 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 already give useful information to to forester, as I said. And so once you 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 do that, at the end, you get also an attribute table like this, and you can just generate basic statistics uh, showing like here the, the distribution of some metrics like tree height cron diameter, cron area, cron volume, but essentially you get also the location and the density of the stands. 
And we did just a first year accuracy assessment with uh, ULS versus field. And so what we have seen so far is most of the stand, when you look at either the median plot height, uh, it's pretty good. But when you get really three that are low, like less than one meter, and you get compet uh, competition, that's where you see that the algorithm has more it's more complex for the algorithms to extract the data, and so that's where you see that you, you still have a less accurate data compared to manual measurement. But after one meter height, that's becoming to be really interesting. Uh, another little two cases, 2D, yeah, this will be fast after that. Uh, so the one we did in Ali Burton Research for us in Hardwood now, because that's the, the team of the, of the conference. Uh, so we did some first uh, flight testing here with the technology in the Blue Aaron Forest. Uh, and what we've seen so far is that using this type of technology, we get a really efficient technology for large surface. The thing is, we get effective colorization capabilities, but it's still an insuff insufficient accuracy if we want to get to extract direct estimation of diameter at best height, for example, uh, as we did with mobile laser scanning. Don't expect to uh, get to the level of detail we had before, like modeling the, the entire tree and getting to the volume. Except if you get maybe some specific condition and really high hands UV LiDAR, you could maybe do it. I've seen some articles we do it, but uh, we'll not get a generalization of that. Um, for example, for the statistic we did here in, uh, in McCoy Brook Forest, we had, uh, like I said before, an RMSC of about 7 centimeters for the DBH when you compare it to manual measurement. So if you want to use that for inventory, you will not get the accuracy you need, but still, you can have a really interesting DBH distribution per 10 centimeter class. You can extract also a tree height, crumb dimension, also get a really good silhouette of tree, so maybe get a bit to the tree quality, uh, but less accurate than, uh, than mobile laser scanner, for example. Uh, last uh, slide of it, the potential that we see for supporting precision forest inventory, flexibility and accessibility of UV laser scanning. I think that's a really interesting technology. We can do also some uh, monitoring and decision making over time that is more complex to get with, for example, urban laser technology. So you can go and fly it and fly it again each year, for example, if you look at growth, that's pretty interesting. Or the state of, for example, the plantation health assessment, that's really some interesting uh, technology for that. Uh, also, as you are scanning more for us, you can also uh, think about upscaling this technology with, for example, urban laser scanning. That's also a, a potential. And the limitation, we see the most, uh, there, there are other, obviously, but limited flight endurance and coverage, especially with that, let's say, 30, 40 minutes, then you need to just uh, come back, change battery, come again, and then uh, it can take some time. The legal and regulatory, regulatory consideration, Kevin talked about it before. And still also an in initial investment and operational cost. Uh, like the entire technology here should be, I don't know, 30,000 for the lighter, for the UV, maybe 10, 15,000. So it's still a, like a, an important cost. And you still need to add the software too. So keep in mind that each year some, we need to pay for the software to pre-process the, the data. So that's, that's a limitation of the technology. And also some learning curve, obviously, but uh, that, that is feasible. Uh, if you want to know more, we published two articles on this technology, so I don't know if you're going to share the PowerPoint after that, you want to take a picture, but a lot of statistics are in there. I just present some uh, most important uh, statistics over there, but uh, I, think, uh, I hope I give you a good overview of what we can do with both technology and uh, potential and limitation of both.